So you go to tune your vintage or vintage style guitar and suddenly this happens. Almost there, almost, son of a! What is going on today guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Jay. Uh, welcome to you as well. And if you enjoy the content I'm bringing to you, please make sure to hit the like button, all that good stuff, subscribe, notifications, do what you gotta do to make sure that you don't miss any episodes. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna be swapping out the tuners on my guitar for something a little bit better than what came with them from the, from the factory. Not only am I gonna be putting on a better set of tuners overall, I'm also upgrading from the standard uh, mechanisms to a locking tuner. If you're not familiar with what locking tuners are, Essentially, it has a little locking mechanism on the back side of the tuner to allow you to clamp down on the string so that you don't have to wind it around the post countless times and try to do some kind of crazy knotting and, and whatever. It's nonsense. If you don't have to do it, why bother? And depending on what brand of tuners you go with, they can go anywhere from 40, 50 bucks on up to about 100 bucks for a set. I decided to go with Klusen Vintage Style in keeping with the vintage style guitar that I'm gonna be putting them on and Klusen is a very good brand from what I've heard. The guitar I'm gonna be working on today is my new Harley Benton SC552. And if you haven't seen that video, here's the link to it right here, over here, one side or the other. Check it out too, you might wanna see that. So I'm brand new to the single cut guitars, uh, the vintage vibe, and I'm having a lot of fun with this guitar. I really like it a lot. So I'm very pleased with it. Harley Benton and Toman did a killer job with this guitar. But you have to understand, because it is budget-friendly or conservatively priced, you know, kind of a mid-tier market, um, they can't spare every expense, you know. They've, they've got to cut corners in one way or another. Uh, the construction is great. The sound quality is great. Uh, pretty much everything about it. The pickups are awesome. Stainless steel frets. I mean, I go on and on. Check out the other video for all the specs and details. However, one thing that I found lacking was the adjustability, the precision of the tuning machines. Um, they're really kind of inferior, I hate to say it. They look great, but they're just, they don't cut it. You go to make a little turn and it's like, doink, okay, I'm, you know, half, a couple semitones out of, out of whack. So I can't deal with that. Um, as I said in the other video though, once you get it in tune, this guitar stays in tune very well. But getting it just right with those tuning pegs is so difficult that I just really had to upgrade it. So. As the thumbnail, you know, shows, I'm going with these Klusen tuners, Revolution tuners. They're locking mechanisms. They've got a 19 to 1 turning ratio, so I think that makes the, the adjustments very precise and minute, you know, when you really just want to dial the tuning in perfectly, quickly, uh, right to the point. So stick around to the end of the video. We're going to install these tuners right now, and then we're going to see how they play. So let's get into it. Okay, again, so the reason I'm changing the tuners is twofold. Uh, first of all, I want to have more accuracy and precision when you're making those fine adjustments on the tuning pegs to get your strings in tune. Generally, with a guitar that's got cheaper uh, tuning heads, tuning machines, it's going to take you that much longer to get in tune, and why waste your time? Secondly, we went with the locking tuners so that we don't have to waste our time winding the string around the tuning pegs. Uh, you know, too many times, not enough times, you got to guess it, who knows, it's a mess. It takes too long, you lock it down, half a turn, it's ready to go. I decided to go with these Klusen Revolution locking tuners. So they are definitely an upgrade. 19 to one gear ratio, so I think that's gonna be very accurate adjustments uh, for tuning. And these things still have that vintage look to them, so that's good. For the purposes of this guitar, that's the way to go. Generally too, you might wanna change your strings uh, while you're doing this. I'm not going to, because these are pretty new and I'm gonna be able to reuse them and I'll show you that as I go through the process. But what I use for these uh, Gibson scale length, the 24 and three quarter inch scale length, I like to go with 10 to 46. And those are the strings I use. Of course, we won't need them today, so see ya. Lastly, the tools we're gonna to need, uh, screwdriver and your typical wire snippers for the strings. And that's it. Uh, because I'm doing the tuning change on this Gibson style guitar, with this vintage style bridge and stop tail piece. If you're familiar with these, when you take all the strings off, these fall right off because they're not held in place. They just kind of fall loose. So I don't want that, want that to happen. And uh, in order to avoid that, we're just gonna do one string at a time. So I'm gonna loosen each string separately and then remove and replace each 
uh, tuning machine. And basically, I don't have a guitar workbench or anything like that, so I'm just using a table with a really heavy blanket on it. And instead of like a little neck rest, just use a small pillow because it works. It's simple, right? Okay, so let's go. Let's just, without further ado, let's uh, stop talking, Jay, and just get to work. And I'm going to do the first string uh, nice and slow in real time so you can see what's going on here. And I'll explain as I go. And then for the next five strings, we'll kind of speed it up to get through the process. Okay? Cool. So basically, you just want to take the string off. I'm not cutting these because, like I said, I'm going to try to reuse them if I can. Um, there's plenty of extra string on the end of these. I think I can do that, no problem. So... Take that sucker right out. Try not to scratch your uh, headstock. Yeah. The back of these vintage tuners is um, basically two screws for each tuning machine. Uh, it looks like a Phillips, so I'm just going to go for it. Wish me luck. And yeah, I always do string changes on my lap. I don't have any special, you know. I don't have any special workbench or anything like that. Just do it on my lap. I've always done it that way. It doesn't bother me at all. You know, do it while you're watching TV or something. And changing these uh, tuning machines is not really much more complicated than just doing a, your typical string change. I mean, it's just a few more screws. So we'll see what we get when we get these off. Wow, that's easy. And the... Uh, Tuning machine just pulls right out. Yeah. Boom. There you go. Let's get that in the camera if I can. So, yeah, these are pretty cheap and shitty. But like I said before, a guitar in this price range, you can't expect to have premium components, you know, top to bottom. I and mean, somewhere they've got to kind of cut corners, you know, save costs. And uh, they did it with the tuners. Okay, sorry about that. Quick battery change and I'm back. So again, I just want to show you what this looks like with the tuning machine removed there. It's just a little hole, obviously. Um, if you can see that. Anyways, okay, cool. So let's put the new, uh, new one in. Hopefully this is going to be quick and painless. And if I can still reuse the same two screws that I pulled out of the guitar, I'm going to. If not, I've got extras here that they obviously gave me. So cool. Okay, let's match these. Got to match it up. Let's see if this fits. Looks like a perfect fit. Yes, indeed. Wow. This is going to be even easier than I thought. So, um, this is my first time changing tuners on a vintage style guitar. I've done it many times on my, my modern axes. But uh, it's basically the same concept. You stick it in the hole, line it up, put the screws back in, you're good to go. So far, so good. You never want to strip your screws, you know, when you're screwing into any part of the wood of the guitar. So just to make sure, you probably want to back it out when you set the screw in just to make sure it catches the threads, the grooves properly in the wood because you're not trying to make a new set of uh, threads in there because that will strip it out for sure. Pretty much common sense, but I figured I'd mention it just in case. And I don't want to go too tight on that. Uh, as long as it's in place, we're good. All right. Now, I believe these work like your typical locking tuners. So you just put the string through and clamp it. Well, let me see what I got here. Okay. I'm just going to feed the string back through and see what we can do. business that's it one tuner is already in place and here's what it looks like on the back 
just so you can see the difference. Uh, the locking tuner has that little round, grooved little machine that you can kind of turn. And it just clamps down on the string internally. And then you don't have to waste your time winding the string around the, you know, the pull, pull piece there. So I'll snip off the extra, you know, a little bit there after I'm done. So let's tighten it up. Just make sure it's in there snugly. Uh, again, no reason to crank these screws down. Just want to get them just tight enough, you know, so that they hold. And that the tuning machine isn't wiggling around. If I can get the damn thing in there. We're good. One down, five to go. Real quick, I would mention that on the underside of the tuners, the old tuners are kind of like a stamped piece of metal, and uh, it's got like a weird curvature to it, so it doesn't all lay, this doesn't all lay flush with the wood, and these new ones do. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's nice and flat, so it'll lay flush with the wood, and probably have just more stability overall, I think. More surface area touching, locking down, I think it's gonna be better. Mm -hmm.